How you going everyone? Lincoln here from Landfish TV. Thought I'd do a video on how I fish Ferguson Street Pier to catch brim. And you, you can't catch flathead here as well, but I've had more luck on brim. Um, so if you do drive down here, you've got some free parking along the street over there, along the gate. Otherwise you do have to pay for parking in other areas and you do have to watch the time restrictions. There's no toilets on this pier. The closest one would be over in the park near Gem Pier, which is probably five minutes walk but otherwise you've got a, a nice pier to fish here. So pretty much when you are fishing this pier, I like to use my lighter rod, which is a one to three kilo katana, thousand size Sienna reel. And I like running these little two inch Seamans. So I know I rant on about the two and a half inch Seamans in motor oil color, but these little two inch Seamans work really well on this pier. I either use the motor oil or I use the pearl color and they seem to work really well. So, I normally start fishing at the beginning of the pier. So straight away, I'm gonna drop a line, I'm gonna start fishing. I'll talk you through what I'm gonna do, all right? So when you're down here at Ferguson, you're fishing structure. You're not casting out far away, you're fishing all the structure on the side, all the pylons, and there's a cross beam that goes along the other side of the pylons as well. And I would be fishing this pier at high tide for broom. You can catch flathead, like I said here before, but I'll probably come at low tide and I'd fish out on the other side over there. So I pretty much use the same method, starting right at the start, all the way along this side. And it's quite simple. All you're doing is you're casting your lure adjacent to the jetty, letting it sink down for a couple of seconds, give it a couple of winds, and just wobble your rod tip. Give the lure a little bit of that movement, let it sink down a couple of seconds, Wobble the rod tip, wind in again. And you're just working that lure really small. I found around here the wobble works a lot better than, than flicking it, like you do with the flick flick drop method when you're fishing for pinkies and flathead. But the wobble method seems to work really well around here for the brim. Always making sure there's no slack in the line. As soon as there's slack in the line, you're gonna miss bites. You pretty much continue working along the side, along these, these pylons and the crossbar all the way along because the brim are feeding on these pylons and on the side of the crossbar and under it. So while you're running your lure along, giving it those little twitches, you're fishing it mid-water. So you're not letting it go down to the bottom. You're fishing it probably halfway down because the brim are just going to be there eating the mussels and things on the side of the pylons. So while you're bringing it apart, you're trying to get their attention and trying to get them to flip around and actually grab your lure. Often you'll get the fish follow it all the way up and you'll give it a couple of those little wobbles just below you and bang, you'll have fish on. As for jig head size, I use generally the 1 16th in a size 1 hook. Um, that generally gives me enough weight to be able to cast it with this little rod as well as being able to work it enough for the brim to get interested. If you do find that the brim are getting a bit finicky, I'll drop down to an actual hidden weight system so that all the weight will be inside the lure so the fish won't be able to see it. And I'll do that in a pretty similar size. The, the lightest I'd go is 1 one twenty fourth, um, but I probably wouldn't be able to cast that too well. I'd probably be dropping it and then walking it back in free spool, clipping it in, then working it. All depends on the day if you can feel that lighter lure and that lighter weight, you can go with it, but I like the, the 1 16th size pretty well. So on that side you're working all the pylons and along the sides, so you're working all that structure. But on the other side here, you have boats where you can work the hulls. So if you're a confident caster and it's not a windy day, You'll be able to cast out along these boats and bring it in nicely, a slow roll and, and wiggling it like I was doing before. And you should be able to pick up some brim along the sides of the boats. But you need to note the difference in the ropes on these two boats. So see there's a cross rope on this boat holding the side of it. You wouldn't really be able to cast out there and handle a fish and be able to get it back in here. So you should only really be casting in these open ones where you've got that big triangle and a long space along the boat because then you can actually try and work the fish into here 
mind you, if you do get a big fish, it's going to be hard set trying to get it back in anyway around all, all these ropes and chains. But it's always worth a try, isn't it? Come to this little triangle gate. I start throwing out casts out like that. And probably every, every gap between a boat, I'll probably throw out three casts just to cover that area and pick up the old flathead that might be out there, the old pinky that might be out there. Because if you're just sticking to the side and just working the side, you might be missing out on other fish that might be out there as well. So I'd work all my way along this side, chucking in between all the boats like this, working all the structure in between the boats, so the boats and the pylons and all the cross beams. Probably put in a couple of casts beside each boat, and if nothing there, then I'll chuck out a couple of random casts out here for the flathead that do hang around here as well. So often I'd get a mixed mix bag fishing along here, I'd get brim and flathead. You do get the odd pinky around. They should be coming through in, I don't know, about February or something. And when they come through all, all the piers and areas here. Yes, brim. So you don't need to do it, but at the start of a fishing session, I normally chuck some of this Procure on. Just some scent, gives that a little bit more incentive for the fish to jump on your line. So Procure, super gel. All you do is pop a little, little dollop of this on the lure and move it around with your finger so it's covering all of it, then you're good to go. So if I was coming down here for Broom at Ferguson Street Pier, I would be coming an hour each side of the high tide. If you come here on the high tide, you've got all that structure that's going to be under the water where the fish are going to be feeding. If you come here at low tide, you're losing, I don't know, 60-70% of the structure that you can fish to catch the, the brim. Just So if you work your lure along all the structure, along the pylons, in between the boats, on the boat hulls, working slow, fishing mid-water, you should be able to pick up a brim or two. It's it's not that hard, it just takes some getting used to how to work the lure, how to do the little wobble instead of the two flicks. That's how I do it. A lot of people will tell you different things. Obviously, you get information where you can. Um, check out the end of this video. I'll chuck in some links to the other videos that I've done around Williamstown, where I've caught some decent brim down here. So if you've got a little soft plastics rod, come down here, catch yourself a couple of brim. One of the best things I can recommend is taking a net like that because I've lost way too many fish trying to skull drag them up. Anyway, like, share, subscribe, enjoy.